What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another uh, review, and in this case it's going to be a novel review for the sequel to Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, so basically Ready Player Two. I had a chance to finish reading the novel, and I want to say overall that I enjoyed reading the novel. It's a good follow-up to the first book, so... Uh, what I did was uh, I finished reading the novel and prior to the review I decided I would re-watch the film just because it mostly did in my opinion a good or it, what they did with the film mostly represented what the idea behind the novel was. There was a li there were a little bit of liberties taken in the film so I will grant that having also read the novel um, but to have a good recap the movie does a good job. So, to summarize what happened in the first um, novel, we have the passing of the creator of a virtual reality game called, or environment called Oasis. So, James Halliday passes away, and rather than just signing over his shares back to the company or to any random person, he sets up an Easter egg hunt to um, pass on his shares, wealth, and legacy to a worthy heir. Um, in that Easter egg hunt, there are three keys that need to be recovered, so basically three tests in order to test the worthiness of the person um, who is looking for the egg, and then there is a fourth and final test in the form of a personality to gauge whether the person who is looking for the egg um, did it just because they want to do it, or are they do they share the same spirit as Halliday himself? So the winner of that contest is a kid called Wade Watts who knows everything about Halliday much like a lot of other people but has the same thoughts and um, patterns as Halliday himself in that he's a video game fanatic he has a lot of trivia and lore and understands that the journey of a video game is not getting to the end and winning or having the highest score but it's the journey itself so just navigating around a world um, experimenting around looking for secrets and basically getting a good feel for the creator creation that a uh, game programmer created so overall that's kind of where we end the first novel uh, Wade Wa Wade wins the contest and rather than just being the sole winner of the game he splits the um, winnings and the control of the company between his f new friends, namely H, Dido, Shaito, and um, Artemis. And basically all is well. He implements a couple of changes like taking Tuesdays and Thursdays off in order to allow people to live in the real world because the real world is real and there's nothing that can truly replace it. So with that in mind, in the second novel, um, shortly after winning the contest, um, Wade and his friends are living large, they're running the company, and overall things are well, but uh, Wade gets a new email with a piece of technology that Halliday was working on called ONI. It's a brand new piece of hardware that allows sensory inputs um, be or more sensory inputs beyond what the regular Oasis gear provides. So rather than just moving around, you have more realistic sensations and smells and tactile feedback so it feels a lot more like you are in the um, oasis um, think of it as true virtual reality so with a uh, smell of vision basically so um wade dido and shaito and h are on board but artemis is not because she feels that the technology is not ready it doesn't necessarily um it's not a good representation of, or it's not a good technology that should be released to the public because of the um, downsides that can, it can provide. While the rest of the group feels that the benefits outweigh the risk, mostly because it allows um, people with injuries and people who are otherwise disabled to live as if they did not have the um, those disabilities. But it does have the potential, to Artemis's point, to create turn people into zombies and um essentially turn off your mind and it takes people out of the real world and does not allow them to um live life to its fullest so the novel essentially starts off there and as a result of re um releasing that technology anna rocket comes back and um 
as a kind of evil AI, sort of, so to speak. But once you get through the novel, for me, it ca I came to the realization that he's not necessarily evil, but he was there to set up a project that, um, to help basically Wade and the rest of the group understand the implications of what they were releasing. So, um, essentially they go on a new quest is created where the group has to find the seven shards to put Kira back together who was um I want to say Ogden's wife I always get the two mixed up but in any case um they have to put the seven shards together which leads them to an AI representation of Kira which is because the ONI headset creates a mapping of the user's brain and puts them into virtual reality. So it's updated every time the user logs into the Oasis with the ONI headset. And overall, the premise there was really good. So for me, it was interesting to see that the, the many gigabytes and terabytes of data to map the human mind could do this. And the whole idea behind the novel is now the impl having the group understand the implications of what they're doing. So while they might be nerds and it's the cool p new piece of technology, but they need to understand what the ramifications are. And making Kira whole again allowed them to realize that they that they could recreate Og in um, virtual reality because he did use the one, the headset once to fight off Anorak. Um, because he kind of becomes an evil AI, but to me, I think as a bit of speculation and thinking outside the box on my part is that he, Halliday created him that way, um, not because he meant to, but because he was mimicking the flaws in Halliday's own personality and then trying to rectify it. So he had unintended consequences in doing that. It's kind of like the whole time travel paradox of going back in time to change one thing, but you have kind of that butterfly effect of, um, um, creating unintended consequences. So overall, the premise of the novel is understanding the consequences of your actions. So Wade comes to realize that Artemis was right, that they should not have rushed headlong into releasing the ONI. They should have tested it more, had focus groups, and understood, understand more of why Halliday did not release it to begin with. So by the end of the novel, they come to that realization. And overall, it was a good continuation from Ready Player One that they have another project, another quest to go on instead of just three tests. They now have to find the seven shards. They have to go into various um, real world um, recreations in the Oasis. Um, Wade has the flashbacks of various parts of Kira's life um, to see how the love between her, Ogden, and um, her, Og, and Halliday created a rift between them. So it's kind of taking that next step between just the rift between Og and Halliday. So I definitely recommend reading the novel. Um, the only downside I could really think of was that the first third of the novel, maybe the I mean, first quarter was kind of slow and it got kind of repetitive after a while. So I was kind of hoping that they spent more, that they would spend more time um, looking for the seven shards, but it did feel kind of rushed. Uh, when they did get to that part, but overall they spent enough time also, so it you, it kind of recreated that whole um, um, idea that they were um, working to find the shards and that they were on a time deadline. So rather than just having a quest to find something, they had, they also had a time deadline, kind of like how you have a time trial, like in Super Mario Kart and certain games where you have to finish things in a specific. Um, amount of time. So overall, I want to say for me, the novel was is a very good sequel. Um, I'm still reading some reviews to see if, uh, for things that I might have missed, but overall, there was a lot of tr more a lot more trivia than rather than just video games. Now they go into 80s and 90s TV shows and, and uh, movies and things like that. So definitely a good novel to read and a good follow up to Ready Player One. So I actually can't wait for the. The uh, movie for Ready Player Two once coronavirus is over, or unless they've already started filming and casting and all that, but I'm kind of curious to see uh, Ready Player Two on the big screen. But that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for 
past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this episode, and until next time.